We're here in Pilot Point, Texas, home of Chad and Susie Chance, and we're teamed up with Hoof Watch to bring you a series of videos for our first contest of our 13th season in Madison, Wisconsin. We've got Tyler Marshall from New Hampshire, and he's a Pats fan, but he can't bowl very good. So we're excited to do this series, and we're excited to see everybody this year. This is the L Brand Forge Coke individual, and this is made out of eight and a half inches of five sixteenths by one. It's called the French Swiss Hind. It's got a little Swiss heel on the inside. It's square toed. It's got a flat square heel on the outside with a little bit of a check in line with travel. It's got the massillets in the toe which come directly off of the toe. Plain stamped on the inside, fullered on the outside for an E3. This French Swiss Hind measures four and a half wide by four and three quarters long. We're gonna make the, the French hind for Madison. It's made out of eight and a half inches of five sixteenths by one. I'm not gonna bump, I mean, I'm not gonna mark it because I know I just want an extreme amount of material on the lateral side. I'm gonna bump it a third, a third, and a third because I want to have more material in my lateral toe because that's what's going to get weeny on me. If I bump it to where the toe bump is in the center of the toe, then I'll always have a nice medial toe, but I'll have a weak lateral toe. So I'm going to have more material on my lateral side. All right, I got a pretty long bump because I don't really need the bump to be in the center of the toe. I need it to be out on the side of the branches. So. I'm just going to bump one good heat and try and get as much in there as possible and try and I'm not trying to get it thick, I'm trying to get it wide. You can start to hear it go in there when it cools off a bit. Less buckling and more upsetting. We got just about an inch in there. We're going to just focus right here on the toe bend, just on this one side. You can see how I already got it going to this one side a little bit. I'm just going to come down here and hook it in. Now I can re-bump my toe. I got it pulled down and then I'm putting material in. This is just adding material the whole time. So we've got it upset right here. What I'll turn right around and do is hold this on the anvil and I'll upset some to the other side now. You can see it upsetting into that corner. I've got a massive amount of material on the inside. I want to get that pushed out so I can get some width, some thick, some width to the branch. You can see I've got quite a bit more material on my lateral side than my medial side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it. You have to stay way out on the bick. The more you sneak back, the more you lose material in your toe. So I've only want one point of contact in here. I don't want to have it back here and have two points of contact. I just want one so that this material doesn't start to evaporate on me. And with the round side of my hammer, I'm going to establish the top corner and the other side of my mass a lot. So I'm going to leave two marks, the lower side of the mass a lot, which is the upper side of the toe and the lower side of the mass slot, which is the beginning of the branch. I'm just going to hold it what I think is straight up, the, the toe straight up with the roof, and just the round side of the hammer there, and then I'm pulling. You can see the mass slot. Now I'm just going to work towards the mass a lot. It's important to have one point of contact. If I go back here, I'm going to lose everything I worked so hard to put in there for. Right here, you can see I've got that roundness of the mass a lot, and I just start getting that out of my way.
and I've got the beginnings of the first branch. Again, come up here, reestablish this. I'm never going to come back here. I'm just going to constantly be trying to pick that back up. Stay, keep the roundness off of the, the face. If I go like that, my toe is going to get wrecked. So I have to stay out here and I'm going to bring it, draw it down. Come down here and flatten everything out. Again, right behind the mass slot, I have to reestablish the roundness. And then here I have to keep it off of the face of the, the anvil. I'm out on the tip. I'm just going to run right up to that, push that out, and then I'm going to come here and I'm pulling this right back up again. I'm narrow this up. Now I, now I don't have to worry about it pinching out, so I'm just going to come in here and put a little round check in there. When I do that, tilt it, and I've got that heel on there. Go through the whole thing again. Go over to the toe, bring it up to the mass a lot, and then go down to the quarter and go around the quarter bend. And just a flattening process on the whole thing. This is square on the end, so to make it to where it comes out a little bit, all I'm going to do is start the inside check for the frog. Square that up, flatten that out. Then you just come back and push that back out of the way a little bit. It's best to try and get the majority of this done right off the bat because you wrecked the branch so bad trying to put this heel on there. You could even try and do it in the straight if you felt like you wanted to do it that way, but it's a whole heat. So I come up here. I got my toe established. Now I'm just gonna, you can see how I'm just pulling material back. That's got the mass a lot started. Then since I can't get in there, look, I pull this down and get that out of the way. Now I can come in here and get a nice clean shot at it. Come here and just square up, out. So when I come next heat, the only way I can get that branch going downward faster is if I put it here, way out on the tip, and pull this up. Just getting this nice and square on the end. Coming right here, squaring this up, and again, I'm pulling right here, pulling right up into that corner. See how I got it pointed down now? Now I just, all I'm doing is squaring this corner up, this edge. Then you come here and I keep it off the horn. and then flatten her up really good. I have a ton of material on this inside edge. You can see how I picked that up. Constantly just, I'm way out on the tip here. And you can see now, I've got my toe, and then I've got the angle that comes off the toe. 
once you establish where your, where your commitment mark is, you don't ever go revisit that. It'll form itself just by pulling this up. It'll pucker and make that deep. You don't ever have to revisit hitting that. It doesn't hurt to put a little bit of this boxing in because this will make your outside heel a little bit sharper. You can see I'm creating a nice sharp line there, but it also crispens up all those aspects of it so I have material to forge now. Just one time revisiting the heel. Now I'm going to just kick it out and camp out. I'm going to move everything over and I'm, now I'm going to go out to my quarter. Go out to my quarter and come around the edge. Flatten everything up. You don't want to go too far into the toe with your toenails. What you want to do is you want to come off at a, at a like if you were to divide the branch and the toe, I want to come off at equal parts of the pie, and that's where my toenail is going to go. You can see how I've dissected that, and that's where my branches are going to be. And then I'm going to put the toenail in line with the edge of the fuller, and that might cant my nail holes a bit, but at least it makes the toe look square. We'll just mark my toenail and my... Everything square. Now I'm just gonna push it out and do the same exact maneuvers over and over again. Just hold it up to the edge of the anvil, and I want to have a straight line for my massile. Goes from one edge to the other. Once I've got some material out of the way, I'm going to pick it up and just get it all nice and neat from the other side. What I'm shooting for is I want this to be a nice it gains speed as it comes to the toe. It's it, from the heel nail to this corner, it gets as thickest part is right there. That's why you can't ever hit right here. That's why you go on the horn, you go out to the corner and you skip to right here because this is where you want the mass of material because you're coming off of the toe here, but you want this inside to look like the shape of the coffin bone. Okay. Coming from this corner, go to that leading edge of the toe, and then right here, just going to pick that up and move that quarter out, and then come around the top and go down to the other side. Just hit that one time, and then we're ready to fuller. I like to just flatten everything out and do the same process over. It's kind of repetitive and over and over and over. Just box it. That kind of gets my width back. We'll come here and I'm just creating a nice line.
I got a, a, an edge that I can work off of. It, you can, I, I can feel the sweet spot it's sitting in, and then I'm just gonna pick up a little bit higher than it is, and just put that nice crisp. I just made my toe nice and wide. Just a love tap right there, a love tap right there, and then the round side of the horn, sneak up and get as close as you can. Move my quarter out and come around. And since it's a little bit cooler, I'll make a nice head stamp in there. With the nice little rat tail file, that puts your nice little check in there. There we go. Got the little swoop in there. I'm just gonna square it up again. Come in here and just hit the tip. Hit the tip, and then just come right in here, get you a little bit of daylight, and sneak up there with the round side of your horn and clean all that up, and then go out to the quarter. Come around the edge. Create a nice straight line there. I think on these shoes, especially more than any of them, you just want to make sure you come in and establish nice and flat. There we go.